morning. Hello, doctor. So how many people do we have today? Ten people. Yes, there's um, a special picture. Yes, woman. Where is it? Here, yeah, hold. Come in the light. Good morning, old boy. He looks good. How are you? That looks good. Blah, 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 blah. You wait. Listen, we've got this thing here called reverence for life. That includes you, too. No, up, up. No, no. Up. Good. And stay there. No. Morning, Doctor. Morning. This chap hasn't been improving much. He's been on the last repol. Nearly three weeks now. Mm. Who gives him his meds? Nurse or wife? Joseph? Ask his wife to show his pills. Pakistan guy, Pakisi. That's not the last repol, is it? <clears throat> She says uh, these pills are bigger, work better. And where on earth did his molasses go? Ladies and gentlemen, we have to tighten things up here. Things don't just walk. I'm sorry, but they're so short of nurses. I tried my penicillin as soon as he arrived, but I can't save the knee, I think. Besides, I don't think we have enough penicillin. What, not enough penicillin? Is it walking as well? Uh, I think you went up to the Lepa village, Miss Anna. Thank you. Where, where is everyone? Who could use some help with this last train? Yeah. What? Oh, no. No, look at you. How are we ever going to finish your new houses? I don't think we ever will, Doctor. Two big works. Of course we will. Won't we, Ming Kui? And when they're finished, they'll be so grand, everyone will want to have leprosy. <laughs> While I'm off the Ming Kuei, keep these slackers at it. There you are. Do you realize what the time is? The boat has been waiting nearly an hour. Joseph has taken your back to the jetty. I hope you, Doctor. Oh, thank you, Kwabi. I'm coming, Anna. I'm coming. Let's book again, Doctor. No, no, America this time to get money from these kind Yankees to finish building your village. If we don't get enough, no village, maybe no hospital. There will be cowboys and Indians. I don't think so. But I've heard there will be buildings a hundred times taller than our tallest bamboos.
How do you like the stage, Professor? <laughs> Please call me Doctor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, well, we have Excuse me, Mr. Excuse me. Can I introduce myself? I'm Therese Bourdin. I'll be taking publicity pictures. It's a great pleasure to meet you, Doctor. Mrs. Schweitzer, hello. Hello. And of course, I'd be honored if you let me follow you around for a day or two. You know, I'll do my best to be invisible. Oh, well, <laughs> well <laughs> I hope that our beautiful faces can raise a few more dollars. <laughs> Doctor Schweitzer, Life magazine called you possibly the greatest man in the world. How does that make you feel? Well, I don't think the news has reached the jungle yet. <laughs> Oh, hello, hello Doc. Doc. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Well, the American people have been so generous. Uh, on behalf of all the patients in La Marena, um, and I wish you could see them, thank you. If you'd only knew, a few of these little pieces of paper truly mean the difference between life and death. They say you're a doctor of all kinds of stuff. Theology, music, philosophy, medicine. Could you tell us ordinary mortals how you do all that? <laughs> I, I sort of blundered into it. Um, I wrote a book uh, about Jesus and I shocked the church, and I wrote a book about Bach and I shocked all the musicians, so pretty soon the only thing left was medicine. And how long has your hospital been going, Doc? Well, my wife should answer that. She's got a good memory. Oh. Uh, Helena. Well, uh, we started back in 1913, uh, but we lost that one because of the war. But we started again, thanks to your kindness, and we've been going since 1924. I visit when I can, but I'm afraid my husband has a life sentence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, who's that? Oh, no. Oh, my great friend, Albert, come here. Come here. Oh, talking about great man, one of the world's truly great men. Oh, Professor Albert Einstein, great thinker, great humanitarian. I'm so proud to be his friend. It's so wonderful to Doctor, see you. Doctor, excuse me, could I get a picture of the world's two most famous men together? Would you mind, Professor Einstein? To tell you the truth, young lady, I'm not sure it will help my friend very much. How do you mean? It may not do the doctor's cause any good to be seen hobnobbing with a dangerous commune. Oh, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. Is that true, doctor? Well, who knows how politicians' minds work, but please take your snap, Miss Buddha. What are you talking about? This makes me feel a little uncomfortable. Oh, well, this is what they do. They want to make a fuss of you. There's no harm in it. What's this evening, Lena? No meetings, just dinner with the committee. Huh? No speeches either. Well, I, I expect you'll have to say something. Wasn't that little girl sweet? She wasn't that little. It was pretty well developed to me. I don't mean her. I mean the little girl. Oh. Although the big little girl seemed nice enough. The photographer. By the way, we have to be at her studio tomorrow for proper portraits. Proper portraits. Hmm. Will we raise enough? Will we raise enough? I, I keep seeing Minkwe, the poor Minkwe, and the boy with the terrible arm. And, oh, so much to do. You are going with me to Gunsbach. Yeah, I said so, didn't I? Well, that doesn't always mean anything, Albert. Oh, don't start that, Lena. I'm dying to see Lena and the little ones. I might be an old bull with the height of an hippopotamus, but I've got the heart of a dove. I miss them too, you know. I never said you didn't miss them. Oh, <laughs> come in. Am I interrupting you? Oh, I mean, no. I could just. No, don't be silly, we were expecting you. Albert! 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 Oh, sit down. <laughs> I'll put my shoes oh, back on. I don't bother with all that. In fact, do you mind if I take mine off? They're killing me. Go ahead, for goodness sake, but you don't mind if I keep mine on. <laughs> Now that you're here, I have an excuse to open this bottle. You know I'm always mistaken for you. Did you know? <laughs> no, really. <laughs> I make you a deal then. 
I take over signing your autographs and being universally loved. And you can take over campaigning against the pound. Oh, that's the deal. I'm sick of all this universal love. <laughs> well, to the two Alberts. Uh, I'll drink to that. <clears throat> Seriously, Albert. We could use your help. Oh, no, no, no. Don't you start him on that again. Listen. <laughs> uh, you know how much I admire what you and Oppenheimer are doing. But it's not my place. I'm no expert. But, of course, I'm, I'm on your side. We have to be so careful with these politics, you know, the funds from America. I know, Helen, I understand, believe me. With these snakes, there is no safety. Central Intelligence Agency. Intelligence. Uh, they have been very busy lately with opening letters, bugging phones after that terrible McCarthy man. They worry about what they call un-American activities. I wonder if Hiroshima is an American activity that they're proud of. I, I don't think I can take on the world. But the bomb, even testing it. What's that thing you swear by that um, respect? Respect for the uh, Ehrfurcht for them Leben, Albert. Reverence for life. Reverence for life, that's it. If only you could speak out against the cursed thing. They cannot take your passport away. You're a bloody foreigner. I'll think about it. Truly, I will. Reverence for life. Have you met each other in Africa? Oh, no. We met in Alsace. I knew Albert as a student, and, and all the girls were after him. Oh, heavens, <laughs> Lane, and all my secret triumphs, please. <laughs> but I was a lucky one. He let me help him with his studies, and when he started writing, I uh, did little bits, editing, translating. What, little bits? Therese, she was a nightmare. Taking out things that she didn't agree with. Oh, Albert, I always gave in. You must have agreed about something. I suppose we thought books are not enough. Is that what we thought, Albert? I don't know. We wanted to do something. We wanted to make something. Yes, something to make a difference, to, to see a, a, a change in, in people's lives. Yeah. But I have to say, I, uh, you know, I began to wonder if it was right and try to change people's beliefs, even even in religion, even philosophy. But well, let me tell you, I fell out with the best people. Aristotle, John Stuart Mill, Immanuel Kant, and, me. and Helena Schweitzer. <laughs> yes. I've been doing it now for 40 years. Had anything changed? No, not much. But at least I thought we could patch up a leper's hand and, and bring a bit of comfort. Our first hospital was sort of a shack, really. to get me talking so much, Miss Therese Bourdin, at your wedding silences, eh? It's your turn now, Dr. Schweitzer. Happy. Thank you so We have a little generator, my son. Well, actually, it's a big generator, but it gives about as much electricity as to light up 
the little lamp in the glove compartment of your automobile. They looked at illness in a different way. A lot of superstition. They were medicine men. And um, sometimes those medicines, mental and, and physical, worked wonders in ways we found baffling. But other times, they could be quite disturbing. And then it went into a power struggle, and, um, and we didn't always win. Strangulated hernia. Chloroform, Lena. They believed that illness was caused by a worm in the body. This is the wife, Daba. We need to cut out the worm, Daba. Mm, no cut, no cut. Oganga will put curse. No cut. Oganga means powerful medicine man. We cut, Daba. I can take out the worm. Zeng, Zeng, hello, wake up, wake up. Thank God, doctor. <laughs> Good. Joseph, bring this man's wife in. Zeng, Zeng. Steady, steady, Zeng. Oganga. He is not Oganga. I am Oganga. Oganga called the girl outside uh, to punish her for what he called her disobedience. We were horrified to think what he might do. In the event, he did nothing. Nothing except showing his powers. Now, Gaba! For your disobedience, you will die. I am Gaga Commander. You will not die. Look at me. This man has no power over you. Look at me. Daba. Daba. The day after, they found Daba's body downstream a little way. She'd taken the baby with her. Sometimes you think you can never succeed. There's so much, so much you... you don't understand. But then you think there's life. There's life, still. You Americans really don't know how to make coffee, you know. And so we lost our little hospital during the Great War. We were enemies of the state, it seemed, being German. So the French put us in a horrible prison where I managed to catch tuberculosis, it was so called. But uh, perhaps it was a good thing we had to huddle together for once because one result was our little baby daughter, Reina, who uh, now has four children of her own. Yes. I'm sorry to interrupt, Mrs. Schweitzer, but I was wondering if you ever get worried at all for your own family now. In what way? I mean, not to go to prison or anything, but I was reading in Colliers that Dr. Schweitzer has connections with communist youth organizations in that new part of Germany. And that they'd said he'd exchanged fraternal greetings with the new regime. I mean, isn't that a bit dangerous? My husband exchanges fraternal greetings with people all over the world. That doesn't mean he agrees with everything they say. But he does cling to the old-fashioned idea of universal brotherhood. I don't think that's too dangerous. Do you? <laughs> 
dialect it means let us try uh, there is a village now of course uh, almost a little town thanks to kind hearts like Schweizer. yours Dr. Schweitzer you late yeah, I'm, uh, I'm coming It was on the river one morning, beautiful morning. I was there with my wife and our helper, Joseph. And I told Joseph that 30,000 men had been slaughtered for Pashendal. And he said, I was making fun of him because he was a poor native. No village, no tribe could afford to pay for so many deaths because that was the custom in Gabon, compensation for each victim. But of course he was right. What could they know, these poor natives? They only knew the secret of life, how precious it was, and that it's the only thing we have. And here it was on the river, the butterfly and the crocodile and the hippo and the mosquito, tiny little animals in the grass, frightened of a cloud shadow, the lazy snake, the busy ant. Yes, all these characters from a children's book. But I thought, they all feed of each other. They take each other's lives. But which one of them takes more than they need to live? Only man. Only man. And on a little scrap of paper, I wrote down four words. In German, I'm afraid I'm sort of a German. <laughs> In German, the words are Erfurt vor dem Leben. In my poor translation, that is reverence for life. That'll have to do, yes. Reverence for life. Even the life of your enemy. That's all fine and dandy, Dr. Schweitzer. But isn't this brotherhood thing all a big smokescreen to conceal the fact that to all intents and purposes you're a commie? Isn't it a fact that your great friend and ally, Professor Einstein, is a member of the following seditious organizations? The American Friends of Chinese People, the National Council of American-Soviet Friendship, the National Reception Committee to the Russian Delegation, the Committee to Abolish the House Committee on Un-American Activities, the American Committee for Spanish Freedom, the Friends of Abraham Lincoln Brigade. Get your hands off me, man! I, I don't want to interrupt your work. I just wanted to say that uh, this, this is terrible. I, I wondered if I could be of any assistance. Sorry, I'm not sure. In what way? I just can't bear to see him being treated like this. It really upsets me. All right, well, don't worry. I'm sure they look after him. Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, this must seem very odd. I understand. Could, could we just talk for a minute right here? Mm-hmm. The thing of it is, I, I, I've been a, oh, a figus, Phil figus. Thérèse Bourdin. Oh, French? Kind of. Well, uh, anyway, Miss Bourdin, I've been a, well, a lifelong fan of Dr. Schweitzer. I guess you could say I, I haven't read all his work. I mean, I'm not academic, not religious exactly, and I can't even play chopsticks on the piano. <laughs> but uh, I just love what the man stands for, you know, his commitment and selflessness. Uh, I've been following the Schweitzer's little tour this week, and uh, 
Hmm. Well, kind of spying on you, I guess. And boy, do I envy you your job. You know, being so close to them and all, chatting away and so unobtrusive. I know, I know. What's the pitch? Isn't that it? Yes. Right. Here's the thing. I have a little PR company, publicity and so on. I know a lot of people in the town, and I think, in a word, I can tap a lot of very profitable sources for the hospital. Mm -hmm. I'd love to help if I could just get to meet them for a moment. Well, Mr. Figures. Oh, sorry. I have to go. Why don't you come to the hotel tomorrow morning? Everyone will be seeing them off. You could. I really have to go. Sorry. I'll be there. I'll be back. Ah, uh, Therese, can you help me find my socks, please? What are we going to do with our shoes? She's coming to Gunsbach, if you've forgotten. Oh, wonderful. Have you had breakfast? Do you want some of this disgusting No, coffee? no, 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 Dr. Schweitzer, I'm fine, thanks. I'm, um, actually, there's a young man outside that I met yesterday who seemed to be quite a fan of yours. Of course, who isn't? But uh, I wouldn't mention it, except that he seemed to have an idea about helping to raise funds in here, in New York. And I thought, in the circumstances... In the circumstances, we can't wait to meet him. Isn't that right, Madame Treasurer? Wheel him in. Here. Here's one of my... Good morning, sir. I'll just be as brief as possible. I know it's a big day for you. Mrs. Schweitzer. Hello, Phil Figgis. How are you? Can I say, first of all, what a terrible thing that was yesterday at Columbia? That guy, the worst kind of American. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No reverence for life, eh? You're absolutely right. We were so ashamed. Mr. Figgis has been following the tour this week, and he, he caught up with me in the corridor after the... Well, you know. And uh, he's a... Uh, what are you exactly? You may well ask. I'm a kind of a... Let's say I'm a facilitator. Oh, my goodness. You're trying to raise funds. I know people whose hearts are in the right place all over town. People maybe you haven't thought of yet. I can get to them for you. Now, if I can build, say, a little portfolio with Miss Bourdain's photographs, maybe come to Europe, maybe even visit the hospital, I can put together a little brochure that I know will put your whole fundraising thing here in New York on a whole different footing. I'm not boasting, and I wouldn't want to be paid, of course. What do you think about it? Mm -hmm. Now you found your socks, I'm going to go before you slam the door in my face. Bon voyage. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> I think. We're going to miss the boat. No, they're coming home on a ship, not an aeroplane. But we still have to get the house ready for them in time. It's a while since Grandpa lived here. He's been in Africa, you know that. Was he in Africa before he was your daddy? Yes, and Grandpa went to Africa with him before she was my mummy. Put the cushion on the sofa, darling. with in America. Well, I won't go into it in front of the children, but... <laughs> Darling, what message do you have from Papi for your grandpa? Papi sends love from Paris and says he's sorry he can't be here. He's working on a major rivet of the organ at St. Clou. He oh. says it's a beauty. You'd love to play it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Lena? Yes? When did this all come in? Thank you, thanks. Just last week? I didn't think it was... This is, this is from Hans and Anna. Huh. Mm. Oh. What is it? A shipment with drugs has gone missing. Maybe sold, but... No. Lena! Lena! Mama? 
The Gabonese Provisional Authority has stopped them working on the site. And especially, listen, the, the Gabonese Provisional Authority has stopped them working on the site, especially the so-called new leper village, and they threatened to close down the hospital for health and safety considerations. Could they do that? No, of course not. No. I, I mean, not without the military, and it's illegal. Health and safety, what do they know? And by the way, the Gabonese Provisional Authority doesn't even exist. It's, it, it's a fancy title dreamt of by some nincompoop with a big hat in Libreville. What are you going to do? <sighs> what can I do? When, when, when Hals and Anna were, were desperate, obviously. When was this? Was it Thursday? Yeah. Yeah, well, then I have to go. I have to sort things out there. But you have hardly unpacked. Well, then I pack again, my dears, won't I? And mother? I can't. New York just about finished me off. I hope I didn't keep you. I had to wait in line for the tickets, but it's all set. I can't tell you. I'm real thrilled to be doing this. I can't thank you enough. So, uh, how did they feel about it, eventually? In the end? You think I railroaded them a little bit? I know I have a big mouth. No. I think they thought at first I might be a girl. Well, I wouldn't have minded that. Sorry, that was a dumb thing to say. They came around to it pretty quickly. So, first off, it's Strasbourg, right? Then this little village guns back. Then Lamborghini. We help. Phew. I could use a beer. You want one? Excuse me. Go. Well, he's never encouraged you to stay there, even when you do go. And then stopping me from doing pathology, everything that interferes with the great doctor's plans for the world. Oh, that's not fair. He knows what a medical career is like, how hard it is to make your way. And for a woman, her prejudices and so on. Just... But anyway, what about you? You trained. Yeah, but I was never well enough to stay for long, you know that. And when you were a baby, a little white scrap from Alsace, you wouldn't have lasted three weeks in the jungle. Anyway, we've talked about this often enough, goodness knows. Why start it now? I don't know. It's just he, he was so full of himself after New York. The greatest man in the world. Applause, applause. Save the world, Dr. Schweitzer, please. I just wish he'd remember the charity begins at home. I mean, how often has he seen the children? Once in Königsfeld and once in... Hello, can I help you? I beg your pardon, this is the Schweizer home, isn't it? Yes, that's right. Is the doctor or Mrs. Schweizer in? Who shall I say it is? It's all I'm... right, Rina. It's our photographer friend from America. <laughs> Therese, how nice to see you. Come in. Welcome to our home. Oh, you've brought your colleague. Please, come in. Come in. Rena, our daughter. This is Therese Bourdain. Hello. Oh, Hello. Marvelous photographer. And Mr. Oh, did my memory. Figures, Mrs. Schweitzer. Phil figures. Why should you remember? So pleased to see you again. How do you do? Rena? Elena, are you sure this is all right? Oh, yes. I hope you don't mind me bringing Phil. Oh, not at all. We did say Wednesday, I think. But it doesn't matter a bit. We can easily come back another no, time. No, of course not. I just forgot the day. I tell you my... Please, come in. Sit down and have some tea or coffee. Or perhaps you'd like a drink. I'm so sorry to say you've missed my husband. Well, not to worry. Dr. Schwartz has gone out. Oh, no, Mr. Figgis. He's gone to Africa. Oh, 
What's all this? It's all my stuff. How long it's been here? Looks like it's been deliberately shoved to the back. This is your stuff, Doctor? That's what I just said. It's my stuff. I don't know what's going on here, but... No, uh, hang on, hang on. Rene! Rene, you see? Ask your boys to put it on board for me and not the day after tomorrow. No, 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 we do it now. Rene, the doctor's stuff is back here. Oui, you can tell me later how it got you. Just now get it on board. Good treat, monsieur. Allez, allez! Nobody's perfect. But I guess he didn't give Rena too much of a fun childhood. You think she still resented? A little bit of a tyrant? I got the feeling from his. Figures. You're wanted on the telephone. Maybe velvet glove, iron fist, you know what I mean? <coughs> Shirts for me? Yeah, for you. From America. Be right back. <laughs> Hello, Phil Figures. Yeah, speaking. Who's this? Oh, yeah, um, I thought I told you never to call me here, darling. Okay, okay, bad job. So what's up? It's after midnight here. Oh, who, Einstein? Oh, he did, did he? I mean, Eleanor Roosevelt? <laughs> oh, praise the Lord, I'm sure. Yeah, maybe tomorrow. Oh, and by the way, who is that FBI goon following us around town? He nearly screwed things up for me at Columbia. Oh, nothing to do with you. No, naturally, it wouldn't be. So what's the program? Gouda. G-O-O. G. No, O-N. G-O-O. And Gouda. Gouda. And he's what? Officially or in front? Okay, need to know, need to know. Jesus, yeah, I get it. Thanks a bundle. Yeah, you too. Good news? Guy connected with a big pharmaceutical group. Didn't realize it was so late over here. But yeah, it could be very good news. They could use some good news. Schweizer went back to deal with some hygiene problem. Yeah? Oh, no, what's this? Not another drink, Therese. <laughs>
Stopped. I'll just go out there. And let's meet in the hall in, let's say, half an hour. About dinner time. Yep. Ah, Min Kue. Min Kue, I'm so glad to see you. You're looking well. I thought I told you to finish building the village. Ah, Doctor, what can we do? They're hitting the men if they start to dig. Who are? Some soldiers. They came one day, knocked down huts, put up bad wire, shot me. They had no business to do that, Minkwe. That makes me very angry. I'm going to have to sort this out. What about your people? They're all right, Doctor. But they're ashamed now. Well, tell them to come out. Open the Friends, it has been a bad time for you and for us all, but we're going to make it better. You will have your village, I promise. But, but oh, I nearly forgot. I brought some silly things back for all of you from the place where the buildings are taller than the tallest bamboos. Look, you can eat it, it's uh, that sugar. Here, here. You want one? There you go. Oh, that's nice. It's a statue, and it's taller than the bamboos. <laughs> Take it. Eat it. Yeah, it's nice. It melts, otherwise it melts. Something's going on here that I don't understand. Kate's being pushed to the back of the warehouse. Provisional authority that doesn't exist. Soldiers from nowhere. Allegations of health and safety breaches. But, Doctor, Surely the government office in Libreville would have something to say about that. It's on their patch, after all. Oh, you think I didn't try? In Libreville, they say it's a matter for Port Gentil. Port Gentil says, no, it's the health department in Libreville. The health department says, no, 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 doctor, no, no, we're your friends, no. Try Bureau of Internal Affairs. I was on the phone the whole morning. They don't want to know. But these accusations, <laughs> health and safety breach, I can't believe. Well? What, Eric? Only that we're not exactly a model of clinical practice, are we? In what way? Just that, to an outside eye, it's a shambolic African village rather than a hospital, right? Goats in the dispensary, dung heaps every 10 yards. And germs in the wards, and deaths in the theater. How many, Eric? How many? It's true. Compared with Libreville, we do well. I grant you all that. And why do white patients come up from Porgentil for treatment, Dr. Hals, if everything So what is? about rats biting my poor kid's feet if it weren't for those stupid cages? Instead of a sprinkling of DDT. This is very unfair. Unfair? Can I say? On the doctor's behalf. Now hang on a bit. No, 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 no. Anna, David, no, 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 no. Thank you. I welcome your support. I know what you're going to say, and and, and, and you're right. Dr. Hulse has a, a point, and and, and 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 Susie has a point. But every decision you take. I take. I know. I admit I'm an old dictator. But every decision could be wrong. Something else is going on. Maybe it's the bomb. Uh, what do you mean, the bomb? Well, maybe it's your opposition to the H-bomb, sir. Now, we have talked about it a lot, haven't we? And you know I wholeheartedly support your position, but not everyone does. Dr. Hulse, for example, with all due respect, Eric. Oh, maybe word's gone out. And what has that all to do with closing the hospital? Maybe it's not to do with the hospital. So much as making you, sir, look, uh... <laughs> You're going to fuss for me, David. What has that to do with the work we're doing here and that we all love and I promise I so much admire and value you for it, for being here with me together to do it with me? I don't understand. I agree with Dr. Schweitzer. I don't see what bearing his views on the bomb could have on the hospital's future. Much as I disagree with him. Also, he hasn't made them public. 
And in any case, here in the jungle, who is to hear them? This is so-called uh, provisional authority uh, fellow. What kind of man was that? But what's his name? Well-educated, well-spoken. His name was uh, Guta, Louis Guta. Minkwe! <laughs> Don't worry, I'm buying some imaginary nails for your hammer. How's everyone this morning? As good as can be, Doctor. Come and look at this, Doctor. Look at these kids. Look at their poor ankles. These don't seem to be working, Anna. Get them down later, Miss Sandler, and we'll get these wounds dressed. Maybe Ming Kue could fit them with some kind of cushioning. Why couldn't we avoid all this in the first place? What about a little rat poison instead? Oh, no, rat poison would be too simple. Death rats breed vermin, Susie, and killing doesn't always solve everything. Oh, I know. It's reference for life again, isn't it? It's a crazy idea of a crazy old man, yes. When you take it to these things. So where do you suggest we draw the line? Eight-legged creatures, yep, kill them. Four legs, maybe. But two legs, or even less. And say we kill every single rat, then other animals will starve. Oh, so the big animals can kill the little ones, then? You're free to kill all the animals you can eat. Yes, all of them. And do we put up a notice for the goats? Do not eat rat poison. Hmm? They're smart, those goats, but some of them can't read. You always have an answer, Doctor, but you're not always right. And sometimes you go too far. Some people might say the same about you, Miss Santa. I'm surprised that you're attacking the doctor in this way. Now, look, folks, let's All I'm look. trying to do is look after my leprosy patients, and you make it sound Your like... leprosy patients, I beg your pardon. I thought all patients were our patients. It's a responsibility we all share, Susie. Dr. Schweitzer, you have some visitors. Dr. Schweitzer, how rude of us to interrupt. Louis and Guter, how do you do? This is my colleague, Sergeant Moses Achebe. I understand how it may have seemed a little high-handed of us, Doctor, while you're away, but we had no means of knowing you were absent from your duties. And we had had worrying reports about conditions here. Naturally, we had to act swiftly. Reports? From whom reports? And was it necessary to frighten my poor lepers and knock down the huts? Some of my patients were struck by your soldiers, Sergeant. That is regrettable, I'm sorry. These things can get out of hand, I know. Perhaps they were provoked. Provoked? By my helpless invalids, you've seen them, you've seen their condition. Yes, a pitiful sight. Something should certainly be done. We hope that one day when our new hospital is built up river, such sights will be a thing of the past. Will there be adequate facilities for lepers as well in the new hospital? You know about this, Dr. House. When Mr. Nguta was here last week, he mentioned that the Provisional Authority had planned and backing for a hospital with more modern facilities. Backing? Who formed backing? I'm not at liberty to talk in detail, Dr. Schweitzer. I'm sure you appreciate commercial confidentiality. Obviously, this applies throughout the scheme. Sawmills, industrial infrastructure. <laughs> and are we to be steamrolled up in some commercial adventure like an, an old two-wheeled market cart? Did you know about any of this, Dr. Fuller? I only heard rumors about the hospital, sir. Not all of us were happy with the idea of a new hospital. Mr. Naguta, you'll forgive me, but I need to speak about these matters with my colleagues. You're staying for the night? You're a very kind doctor, but we have an offer of accommodation further upriver. It's simple, but practical. Perhaps 
If you permit, we can meet again tomorrow and look over the site and have a more considered view of the way ahead. By all means. And perhaps you permit us to offer you lunch. A simple but practical lunch. <laughs> we should be delighted. Till tomorrow. So, what do we do now? Eric, I need to be sure whose side you're on. It's not a question of sides, Doctor, is it? I've worked here long enough, you know whose side I'm on. Perhaps that's why we have a problem. You don't need to be an enemy to see that there are things we need, things we could change. I'm asking where are they getting their money from? And more importantly, what's going to cost them, the poor fools? Do they know what that sort of money means, where it comes from? Whose pocket it's going into? Do you think that our patients and their families know what's going to happen to them? Their children. No one takes care of them like we take care of them. Oh, no, of course not. We can't expect that, but children? If you think of them like that, isn't that just pushing them back a little too much into the nursery? And maybe what these people are saying is let us grow up a little, but in our own way. Sorry, that's frightfully rude of me, Doctor. No, David, no. But the thing is, are they ready for it? Would you give them a syringe and a packet of needles tomorrow and say, go ahead? Huh? <sighs> You're right. Maybe I am in the wrong century. Tell me what I have to do. You can't do more than you have done, Doctor. Don't be downhearted. We are your friends. Of course. Good night, Doctor. Anna, a moment, please. Are they right? Is this just a shambolic African village? Is that all we've managed to create? Why are you asking such a silly question, Doctor? You know it is not. I'm going too far, Anna, maybe, like Susie says. But in the good fella, and the funds drying up in the bomb business, I need to be sure. I need friends, Anna. Am I an old tyrant, after all? When I first came here, you said you've come to Mount Olympus and I am Sears. It took me a while to realize you were joking. What made you think I was joking? Go on now. I get tired. I'm not so young. I must learn to sleep more. Thank you for your kindness, Anna. Good night. Welcome ashore. You must be... Pierre Bourdin, and this is my colleague, Phil Fergus. I don't know if Dr. Schweitzer told you... Oh, yes, yes, we've heard all about you, Miss Bourdin. He's, a, he's quite a fan. Mr. Fergus, how do you do? How do you do? Uh, let me help you with that. I'm David Fuller, one of the sawbones around here. Yeah, sorry about the weather. Oh. <laughs> Does it like us a lot, Dr. Fuller? Well, let's just say it's not as bad as Manchester. Now, this is Quabby. 
Hello. This is Hello. Wambua. Hello. And this is Wambua's little friend, whose name escapes me. Hello. Three of our best men. If you boys want to help uh, unload the luggage, let's get you out of the rain just up here. Yes, these are our temporary residents. Uh -huh. Some of them are less temporary yes. than others. You see, patients are usually brought in by their families, who then stay until they're better. Now, they like to cook for themselves, but we provide the food, we put them up, and, well, get them to work. Oh, building, gardening, whatever needs doing. If you'd like to just go through here, it's the only way they can pay. And that way, the families don't get split up. <laughs> Speaking of food, I dare say you two could pour something down. It's a fruitful journey, isn't it? Uh, yes, try to avoid the puddles, sir. Uh, anything else? Well, frankly, Mr. Naguta, whatever you say, if this is the way your provisional authority exercises its powers, I'm not looking forward to what will happen when, if, you do get independence. Ah, the good Therese. Ah, Mr. Figures, come in, come in. Ah, you, you met most of the staff, didn't you? Yes. Sorry we didn't pay. Of course not. We are the latecomers. It's great to be here. Hello. Well, you won't have met the guests of honor. Uh, Sergeant Moses Achibi and Mr. Louis Nuguta. They represent the provisional authority, I've been told. How do you do? And Teresa is a wonderful photographer, and she's going to make me and my wife into film stars. <laughs> and her colleague, Mr. Figgis, is very kindly going to sign money for us from all his friends in New York. So, what were we saying? Oh, yes. Are you ready for it? Ready for what? Independence. You have to be seen to be. Question of trust. Are there no other Africans invited to lunch, Dr. Schweitzer? Uh, Joseph, moment. Uh, Joseph, um, may I introduce you to our invaluable Joseph, who's been with us ever from the beginning, and our old friend, Mr. Zeng, who was almost one of the first patients and who repaid a moment of care with a lifetime of service. Would you too invite some of your friends to join us? But, Doctor, you know they won't come. And if I invite them personally? Hmm. Well, you see, locals won't eat the food when it's not prepared by the family members. Fear of being poisoned by their neighbor. Food all right, Sergeant Chibi? In Libreville, I worked as a cook. But here, everyone is a cook. I cooked your meal, Mr. Nguta, Sajana Achebe. But my wife cooked mine. <laughs> and doctors? Do you have any African doctors? Are you volunteering? <laughs> I'm afraid I only read PPE, politics and economics at Oxford. Not medicine, alas. Well, you see, um, Dr. Fuller, Dr. House, Nathan, Anna, myself, we're all volunteers. We have to be. There is no money. Not a single one of us has a Rolls Royce. And so far, I'm sorry to say, but no African doctor has ever volunteered. Yet. It's my constant disappointment. How hard have you looked? Africans don't owe the debts that we do. What debt is that? We took your land. We took your oil your copper, your diamonds. We took your people. And what did we give back? Slavery, alcohol, and disease. It sounds like an old story, but it is the truth. You can't go on paying the old colonial debt, Doctor. This is the second half of the 20th century. Can I ask you all to look this way for a moment? The worst thing is, they say the government have seen his letters of support to Einstein. Several of them. How could they do that? I mean, how could they have got hold of them? Where did this paper come from? It's the Herald. 
A friend brought it round when he saw the name. He picked it up at the railway station in Strasbourg. What did your father say to Einstein exactly? It's the bomb business, isn't it? Great humanitarian revealed a secret communist. Support of nuclear disarmament. And apparently, the scandal press has they just not just read, but raids under the beds. That's supposed to be the hospital. Saint of Lamborghini has feet of clay. Close down this hotbed now, we say. My poor Albert. I must go there. Mother, you can't. How can you? You are not well enough, and what good would it do? We started this thing together. I'm not going to let those awful men stop us now. I'm coming with you. You will not go alone. I don't believe it. Not another one. What date? September 48. Well, see if you can find some, uh, I don't know, gap zone. We'll have to try that. What's wrong with her? Um, second pregnancy went wrong. Wow. How old is she? Twelve. I suppose it's hard to encourage some kind of contraception. Well, that's not the problem. She's got gonorrhea. It's endemic here. What have you done with my patient? What patient? I've done nothing. You know where Susie. we revel. Please, outside. Excuse us. I've done nothing with your patient. And what patient? And mind your tone. I will not mind my tone. I put Minkway to bed with a fever after they worked him too hard this morning. And one of the nurses hold him out of bed to repair something. Susie, a little respect, please. Respect. Respect to the great doctor who must be obeyed. My patients need me to protect them from you and your nurses. They'd be better off if the nurses cared more about them than less about pleasing you. Hi there. I'm Phil Figgis. We didn't meet officially. I'm with Therese, the photographer. We're doing a 
little brochure about the dock and all your good work here. I uh, hate to snoop, but I couldn't help noticing you seemed a little upset back there. I have a short fuse. I sure can sympathize with that, jeez. Oh, excuse me. No, I mean, even in my job, I, I get so uptight sometimes. What you're doing here, I... What is your job? My job? Huh. I'm just a PR man. You know what that is? It's when you tell people how great some people are that they might not have known about. Or they might have overlooked. You know, like if they were stuck in the middle of the African jungle all of their lives doing great work. So you want to advertise it all? No, no. We just want to tell people the truth about him. Well, that's a fine thing to do. He's a great man. Hi there, one boy. Quabby, how's it going, man? Give me five. You know what that is? That's how we say hello to our pals in New York. You want me to show you? OK, so uh, put your hand up. Oh, it's difficult, right? Uh, OK, so we'll do it with uh, Wamboa. Uh, no, OK. Right, uh, tell you what. Kwabi, you give your tray to Wamboa. Now, hold your hand up, palm toward me, fingers up, and I do the same. And now we slap our hands together. Wow, like that. That's great. So listen, they make you work like this every day, carrying surgical stuff and that? They don't make me. I like to. I learn. Right, right. Say, uh, either of you guys seen that soldier man and his boss, Mr. Nguda, anywhere around? Sorry, sir. I have to take glasses quick. Sure, yeah, sure thing. You, uh, you go on now. Catch you later. What happened? I've got some wonderful stuff in the wards. You know, not the really imprintable set cases, though I got a few of those. We just have to be careful what we're going to use, obviously. Sure. Oh, phew. This is a hospital? Oh, Phil, you're the living end. Have you ever been further north than 52nd Street? You know they have fertilizer in Central Park, too. And lepers planting cabbages in Central Park? My God, Phil. Sometimes I think you're from the Dark Ages. Leprosy isn't contagious like that. You know, most of these poor guys are suffering from other things. Leprosy attacks the immune system, I think. Anyway, I'm starting to sound like a brochure. You're supposed to be writing it. Write that down, figure. Yes, miss. Yes, miss. Three bags full. Tea? Therese? Oh, my God. Where's he gone? Are you there? Phil, take a look at this. What the hell is it? I think it's an X-ray scanner, or was. It's a pretty expensive toy, isn't it, just to get thrown away? There must be a reason for it. Guess the doc knows best. Picture? Mm. I'm not sure it's the best advertisement. Do you see Nguda and his goon anywhere around? Ah, something about them appealed to you? I know. It's the uniform. <laughs> you guessed my secret. No, I just want to quiz him about what he's got against the old man. Might be helpful. Susie. I've just come to say sorry. For? You mean for which of my many offenses? I didn't mean that. Sorry for causing a scene in the ward. It was stupid and rude, especially with these weird guys around. The good and the sergeant. Yeah, and the American. Mr. Figures, weird, you think? He talks too much. Anyway, I don't want to be your enemy. But am I yours? You think I'm a bit hard on you sometimes. Maybe I am. I worry too much. Doctor, it seems to me that people who try to love everybody often find it hard to love anybody. 
There, you see, I told you I'm stupid and rude. I'm sorry. Who did Jesus love? Do we know? Anybody? His mother even, his father, Joseph. Poor carpenter, sawing wood in the shed, not understanding anything. She's right, angry Susie. What was going on, they must have wondered. Who were all these people? Jesus didn't help. I must be about my father's business. <laughs> Poor Joseph. What's the answer, Anna? You ask yourself too many questions, Doctor. You get up in the morning. You see a sick patient. You do your best. What else can we do? Um, yeah, you're right, as usual, Anna. <laughs> you're right. And I'm keeping you up. <clears throat> I'll bid you good night. May flights of angels sing thee to thy rest, etc., etc., as the Bard says. That'll be one of them now. Editor, the Washington Post. Dear sir, it's with a heavy heart and with some fear of the consequences, not for me, but for others, that I write to reiterate the grave dangers of uncontrolled nuclear. This is all nonsense, isn't it? Be honest. I can see what you're up to, but for the life of me, I can't see why. Where you come from? Centuries of accomplishment. Confident in your identities, wealth, and the power to deploy it. Little Gabon, we're in the ninth month of pregnancy. We're about to shake ourselves free. We're nervous. Can you blame us for looking around for a source of milk? Very fancy metaphor, Mr. Nguta. Now, I don't know who promised you milk, but... You have to weigh the damage. They're your people he's looking after. If this means attacking Schweitzer, you can't count on me. He's lucky to have you, Eric. Thanks for the whiskey. Night. Mr. Nkuda? Mr. Nkuda? Oh, Mr. Nkuda, thank God. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, uh, I'm trying to have a word with you, but I seem always to keep missing you. This isn't really the ideal place. Ideal for what, Mr. Figures? Uh, Mr. Nkuda, I'll come clean with you. I have reason to believe that, uh, like a lot of people, you guys would like to close down the hospital and that uh, you might have received assurances that there would be funding for a new hospital worthy, uh, worthy of the new Gabon and other help. Am I right? Uh, what I'd like to know is, is this help contingent on your closing the hospital? You have your job, Mr. Figgis, and I have mine. I... What I mean is if we close... I... If you close the place down, what happens to all these people, the staffs? Schweitzer can stay. 
and the rest to cut their throats. Miss Anna, please quick! The first big run out here! Dr. Anna, please quick! The first big run out here! Please, quick! The doctor is here! The doctor is here! Christmas. <laughs> oh. I have a better present for you. <laughs> oh no, now I know it's my birthday as well. Hey, no. Papa. Hmm. No little two legged oh, yeah. presents? Now that would have been something. Hello. Oh, hey. Ah. <laughs> Lena, Lena, look at here. Oh, Joseph. Oh, thank goodness. Someone sensible in charge. Dr. Rez. <laughs> Is he still making you work? Well, the liver and the shanks have become weak, but the heart is strong. <laughs> Verena, do you remember our great friend, Joseph? It's ten years, but of course I remember. This way. Oh, Torres. <laughs> Only two. You made it all right. Isn't it a journey? Uh, did he shout at you for coming? Mr. Figgis. <laughs> Hello, I remember. Did you think he would? Yeah. No. Everyone's been sweet. <laughs> Hello. Uh, what a place. Dr. Res, I are honored to welcome you. Will you be coming tomorrow to see our poor village? I would love to. With Susie. Hello. Hello. How's the village? <laughs> so you think it's that serious? You remember the people in the audience in New York? But how did they get hold of my letters to Albert? To the government. They do what they want. What did you say to him in the letters? What we all think, that the bomb was a disaster for the whole world, etc., etc. Well, they never managed to uninvent the bow and arrow. No, this is different, Lena. I don't have to tell you that. And it's not too late. The politicians won't tell the truth. Only the scientists can do that. Oh, but Albert, it's... Can't you see what they're doing? They're going to break you first. Call you a racist, a hypocrite, anything. Then the funds will dry up and we'll lose the hospital. That's better than the world, though. Oh, now you're being apocalyptic. Hello, dear. Who's being apocalyptic? This is where I come. And what's all this? provisional authority nonsense that was also in the newspapers. What's one little hospital matter to them, a whole country? Did she tell you? Of course I know it's serious. I don't see why we can't fight back. She's right, Eddie. And all those poor patients could die tomorrow and the CIA wouldn't turn a hair. David said something like that. David? Dr. Fuller. It's a good lad. Holds my hand when it trembles. So he agrees this is all about the bomb. I feel so guilty but about not supporting Albert and Oppenheimer and the others more openly. But what can I do? It doesn't seem to make much difference to them if your support is public or private. To use whatever weapons they can get. Your private letter, Daddy. What kind of people are these? We can't let them win. I don't know how difficult this is. I'm so happy you're here, you, my dear, too. Photograph, do you? Can I just see that funny looking ball they're playing with? Please? Okay, okay. Now, boys, I'm gonna ask you to step back away from that thing, right? Okay? This is a bad thing. 
make you sick, right? Nurse? Nurse? Yes, miss. Can you please bring the doctor here, quickly? It keeps on a little observation. Depends on the paper for it. And how often they actually handle it. But how could those little guys get to it? I saw that fence. It's pretty strong. The light has never did this. Think where? Would you your voice please seal this up as soon as possible? Yes, do Joseph, make sure the village knows about the danger here. Remind them what that sign means. The worst kind of worm. One that we even can't cut out. We were wondering why it's stuck in there anyway. Uh, Bally thing started rusting away two weeks after we got it. We got a lot of stuff that would be a whiz in a nice, big, shiny clinic in Zurich, but here, insects, rats, humidity, not to mention no electricity, no tech backup. I hate to say this, but do you ever wonder if maybe Le Grand Docteur resists being pushed too fast into the future? I know that's what it must look like. But the old man's found a kind of balance between what we can give them and what they want. It's a community. Well, I think you're a bit of an old sentimentalist, David. Don't you think the community could adjust to the challenge of better sanitation, purer water? All right, Eric, find us the money. Uh, isn't that what this guy in Gotha is offering? Well, if anyone knows you do, Eric, he seems to have made you his confidant. Do you really want to be run by Roach or Beecham's from an office in Libreville? And, and told what drugs you're allowed to use just because they manufactured them. Better than them all being out of date and you and the doc having to tip them in the river in the middle of the night to stop the locals stealing and selling them. No, I don't know, Eric. This has been a happy place. Yeah, Will we all be here in a year's time? Hmm? Any weapon they can get hold of. You were right. I never expected this. What happened? I was dosing. Some villain ripped a hole in the security fence. What security fence? The fence found the old scanner, the X-ray machine, and of course the boys went in and started playing ball with their new toys, but unfortunately, they radioactive. Oh, Albert, who could have done that? I've got some ideas. But that's not the point. The point is, what will they do next? They use the very danger we're warning them about to attack us, and that is so smart. These little fellas might die because of me. Oh, that's ridiculous. How can you blame yourself? How can you possibly make that connection? If they can do this and use my personal letters, let them use my public ones. I've had enough. Join with my dear friend Albert Einstein and others in begging scientists to tell the world what terrible danger we face with the bomb. I give you my opinion with anguish. Anguish in my heart. Anguish which holds me from day to day. I didn't send it yet. I will now. Something has aged worse than we have. Do you think the surgery opens? <laughs> <laughs> so 
So this is how it ends. They thought I was a danger before. Albert, I know you won't like me saying this, but I wouldn't be sorry to see you come home. Take a day off now and again. Uh, maybe not as often as God, but say once a month. What is about the letter? Talk about burning your boats? Did you ask Mother about this? Did you even think of asking me? Not that I count. Nothing changes. Oh, Heina, please, be fair. This won't help. I don't think your father's made up his mind yet. What am I to do? You say they can't win, but who are they? If I do nothing, I let down my old friends. Old friends? <laughs> old friends? What about letting down this old wife? And that young daughter, and this hospital, and these patients, and everything we've ever fought for. No, but you said yourself. Oh, I know, I know. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know what to think. But this is what you believed in. This hospital, these people in there. That's what your life's been about, and not just yours. What's that compared to some noble words in a rubbish newspaper? That'll get thrown away tomorrow. Isn't Mummy right? A hospital versus yesterday's newspaper? You choose. Hey, now, my dear, I wish I knew. The money is bound to dry up, started already. And to tell you the truth, for the first time in my life, I feel a little tired. They might manage to shut the hospital, but at least they haven't shut my mouth. Good for you. But what about us? Can I remind you? Your wife went without a husband year after year, so you could keep this thing going. I, I went without a father my whole childhood, so Daddy could keep this thing going. We were so proud of you. We were not happy. But you were prepared to make the sacrifice. And now you're going to throw it away because of a bunch of lying, paranoid spies in Washington. I can't believe you. Don't you think that I don't know? Don't you think I lay awake here? Night after night, yes, year after year, listening to other mothers, comforting their children, other babies crying, not wishing it was my own. Huh? If I was selfish to be here, it was because I thought it was even more selfish to run away. Well, that's a wonderful doctor of philosophy kind of excuse. I wish I could learn to think like that. Oh, you just stop. I can't bear it. I'm sorry, Mama. I, I better let Daddy and you decide what to do. Good friend, I have to say something sad. I think that my carrying on here at Lombarena is damaging the hospital. We seem to have many enemies. Well, I should say, I have many enemies. Some of them are here, amongst the people we thought we were helping, but at least to them we can talk. But others, it seems, are in America and they're faceless. They're enemies of my friends and of yours. These are men that are driven by fear. They're frightened of imaginary dangers, and so they create real ones. The doctoress, 
My Dr. Reyna and myself, we had long and painful discussions about how to solve this problem. But the solution is simple, I'm afraid. If I go, there is a chance that these enemies will leave the hospital alone. So perhaps, after all, I'm the worm that needs to be cut out. I hope. I hope so much that you will all stay and fight to keep La Morena. You've been the best of colleagues and the best of friends, especially those who shouted at me to remind me that I had to join the 20th century and I don't know why you're all looking at Susie. <laughs> But for now, dear friends, He can make it well. And he's not with doctor. There's no hospital. So go home now, all! No use to stay! No doctor, no nurse, and no medicine! Go home now, all! I think after all this time, I might be able to find a complete pair of socks. Father, I think I'd better come and look at this. Mama, come on. She is not gone. Our great doctor is still here. <laughs> Yeah. 
quite so. A word, if I may. It seems to me you have unquestionably won the day. I should be a poor loser not to congratulate you. Of course, it would be a foolish move of the new Gabon to lose all these votes, not to mention all these patients. And for that reason, if for no other, and I'm perfectly sure there are others, we should be grateful if you would continue for the time being to look after these people. It will be some time, after all, before our new hospital is ready. I astonish you? Yes, and I do. We take our chances. It's a new world, Dr. Schweitzer. this hospital tomorrow. Drugs dumped in the river, exploited kids. And you walk away from it because a bunch of savages go into their dance. I thought... Mr. Figures, you're talking about my fellow countrymen. Sure, sure. Forgive my old southern redneck ways. Oh, I forgot how sensitive you people are. Just between you and me and the United Nations, I, I thought we were on the same side. What side is that? Oh. Oh, I get it. Doesn't matter whether the hospital closes or not, you've got your assurances. They come in a little brown envelope. I think you're being deliberately offensive. Our assurances relate to investment and development. As far as your organization goes, though it's none of my business, I think you'll find that Dr. Schweitzer's political activities have been dealt with in other ways. So don't need you anymore? On the contrary, Mr. Figgis. They don't need you. Goodbye. Phil? That's one to remember. Sorry to see your pals go, Phil. Feeling lonely? Uh, Therese, I just, um, I had to... Guru was... Don't bother, you know. I've been a little slow at getting the picture. I don't mind so much you fooling me. But these people here, I've been a lifelong fan. I love what he stands for. What do you stand for, Phil? Letting little kids get radiation sick? Cheap shot, T. Bleeding heart liberals make me tired. Nobody else in the whole world has any principles, only you. So what happens if they get the bomb and we don't? Well, Mr. Figgis, I wish I was as sure as you that spreading lies about good people was the best way of saving the world. Who says save the world? I got no big ideas, unlike some people. I just do my job. And you must be so proud of it. So long, Phil. Hello, boys. Hello. 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 Stop, stop, Grabby, stop, stop. Here. Wink, wink. You will be the man to drive in the first nail of the new village. Yeah. <laughs> what did he say? Why, why are they laughing? He remember what you said, Doctor. He says when people see these grand houses, they're all ones to be lepers. <laughs> <laughs> In my room in Lambarena, I always kept by me on the shelf the little book with the sayings of Lao Tse, the great Chinese thinker of the 6th century BC. His words on war and victory are memorable. Weapons are disastrous implements, no tools for a noble being. Only when he can do no otherwise should he make use of them. He who would rejoice in victory 
would be rejoicing in murder. The slaughter of human beings in great numbers should be lamented with tears of compassion. All people are able and capable of compassion, able to develop a humanitarian spirit. It abides within us all, like tinder, ready to be lit, waiting only for a spark. Everyone can have his lambare. Zum Sterben, zum 